welcome again. Um, I have 330 and we want to make sure that we are honoring your time um, this afternoon. My name is Beth Nash and I work at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. And um, what I do is I am the testing measurement specialist for mathematics for the state. So that means any um, any math tests like a, a check in an EOG and EOC for um, elementary through high school. Um, those are my purview. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Dan Allman. And Dan does the same. He is the testing measurement specialist for reading. So um, any kind of check-in, EOG, EOC for um, elementary up through English 2 and high school, um, that's where Dan's field of expertise lies. We appreciate you taking the time today to um, attend our webinar on um, the Lexile and Quantile hubs. So I'm just gonna present for, for just a moment and just kind of hit some um, frequently asked questions and then we'll turn it over to our colleagues with Metametrics. Due to the size of our webinar, we were expecting not quite 700 folks today. Um, everyone is muted. Um, we will be recording today's webinar, um, and I've already started that recording. The webinar will be, or the recording of the webinar will be sent out via email tomorrow to all registrants. And so that's going to be folks who uh, were able to join us live today, and also those who maybe got caught up with, um, with something and they weren't able to log in. Once you receive that recording, you will be able to forward that on to others. And we also will be posting uh, the recording of the webinar onto the DPI website. Um, you know, if this is something that you'd like to share with your colleagues or perhaps um, look at when you are meeting with your PLCs or PLTs. Uh, NCDPI is not offering any continuing education credits for, um, for either being here live today or watching the recording of this webinar. And with that, I am going to turn it over to the very capable hands um, of our colleagues with Metametrics, Matt Copeland and Jane Scott. All right, Matt, you should be able to drive now. Yes, thank you, Beth. I'm just trying to share my screen now. If somebody could confirm that I am sharing uh, my screen, then we'll be in good shape here. Matt, you're looking good on this side, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for giving up a little bit uh, of your Tuesday afternoon with us. We're so thrilled that you're here. Uh, excited to share uh, the Lexile and Quantile Hub and all that it offers. Of course, um, this webinar is brought to you by Metametrics, creators of the Lexile and Quantile frameworks. And, and again, we're, we're thrilled and, and hope that we can use this as a launching pad uh, to con continue our conversations around the value of these measures and how they can impact teachers and families and students uh, across North Carolina. My name is Matt Copeland. I'm the Director of Educator Engagement here at Metametrics. I am joined uh, by my colleague, Jane Scott, our Senior Educational Facilitator. Uh, Jane will be in the chat a field of the WebEx here, sharing some links and doing some other things that uh, will make this a little bit more seamless. So you guys uh, don't have to wait for me to find a pausing point to catch up on some of that stuff. Uh, but she will be able to share that information with you uh, so that you have this in, in real time. Um, in terms of our agenda for our next hour together, uh, we will begin with a quick review of Lexile and Quantile measures. I will do my best to keep that very, very short. If you're a fan of the NFL, I will try to stick to my two minute drill uh, to make that happen as quickly as possible. And then we'll get right to accessing the Lexile and Quantile hub, which I know is while you all are, are here this afternoon. Um, I'll take a quick moment and, and share our support community, which is where a lot of the resources are um, that will help folks get started. Um, so if you are attending this webinar here this afternoon and, and thinking about sharing this with your colleagues, um, uh, an important component of this is that support community. 
folks, a place where folks can go who are just getting started with the hub and the various tools that are there that can assist them and, and make that transition as smooth as absolutely possible. And then finally, uh, we'll we'll delve into exploring some of the individual tools. Um, to be candid and upfront, I will not have time to go through each and every tool that's included in the hub, uh, but I will try to hit the highlights this afternoon, particularly for that elementary level audience, the tools that Jane and I believe are the most relevant uh, for teaching and learning at, at that grade level. So with that, um, let me get started with my two minute drill. Uh, this is my quick review of both Lexile and Quantile measures. I'm sure for many of you, um, this will be a, a review. For others, it may be new information or a good refresher on just some of the details of how our two frameworks actually work. So we'll begin on the reading side of things and the Lexile framework for reading. Of course, both of our frameworks are, are founded on this concept that you can place these two very different things on the same scale. Those two different things being both student ability and the difficulty of materials. So when we're talking about reading on the Lexile side, we're talking about placing a student's reading comprehension ability on the same scale as the complexity of a text that he or she is reading. So as you see in this example here, on the left-hand side of this slide, you see this young lady who let's imagine has a 770 Lexile reader measure in, in terms of that describes her reading comprehension ability. And let's imagine this child is sitting down with uh, a book that has an equal measure, 770L on the text side. In this case, the example is Sharon Creech's Walk to Moons. What we know from this is that this is an ideal match for this child. Think back to that old Goldilocks metaphor for just a moment, where, where things are, are not too hard, too easy, but just right. That's what that match, the 770 Lexile on the student side and the 770 Lexile on the text side suggests. In other words, this child's going to see enough familiar vocabulary and simple sentence structure to make reading comfortable, but yet enough new vocabulary and enough more complex sentence structure to continue growing her reading skill at that optimal level. That's our dream. If you think back to the old uh, educational theorist Vygotsky, it's that zone of proximal development. That's exactly what we're going for with these two frameworks. Likewise, on the mathematics side, the quantile framework um, does something very, very similar. Again, we're placing student ability and the difficulty of material on that very same scale. In this case, you see the example we have on the left, uh, a student with an 840Q quantile student measure paired with a um, piece of material, whether that's a um, video or a worksheet or an online game or, or whatever it may be, um, that also has that 840Q quantile measure. Again, what this tells us is that we're in this child's sweet spot. This is where this child is ready for instruction. And that last phrase is really, really key because there is a distinction between the Lexile framework for reading and the Quantile framework for mathematics. And that is this. On the reading side, when we deal with Lexile measures, we are talking about independent reading, reading that a child can do without a teacher without a family member or other adult helping assist um, that reading comprehension. Whereas on the mathematics side, with the quantile framework, we're talking about readiness for instruction. So when we see that 840Q student matched up with that 840Q lesson, what we know is we assume a highly effective mathematics teacher is there on the elbow of that child helping, providing basic instruction, 
coaching that child into um, addressing this particular piece of material. So again, the Lexile framework deals with independence. The Quantile framework deals with instruction. And that is the key difference um, between the two. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, where do I receive these Lexile and Quantile measures? And in fact, um, there's two possibilities that we want to outline for you here. Um, number one, you absolutely are receiving Lexile and Quantile measures from those end of course and end of grade assessments that Beth mentioned. Uh, all of your state assessments have been linked with the Lexile and Quantile frameworks. So in addition to receiving the scale scores from those assessments, you're also receiving Lexile and Quantile measures. In addition to that, a second way you may be receiving uh, Lexile and Quantile measures is through any interim benchmark assessments or instructional programs that are being used at the local level. So your district or, or your school building may be using an instructional program or an interim benchmark assessment that also has been linked with the Lexile and Quantile framework. And so in that way, you may be receiving multiple Lexile and Quantile measures throughout a given school year for each individual child. And I'm sure Jane is posting the link to the complete list of all of the interim benchmark assessments and all of the instructional programs that our two frameworks are linked with. It makes complete sense that regardless of the program, regardless of the assessment that you're using, having a common scale that allows you to explore where this child is and how this child is growing is completely advantageous to the work that we do. So around the country, um, we hear from a variety of stakeholders, educators, families, students themselves, about the value and the utility of, of these two frameworks. And, and first of all, um, from, a, from an educator's point of view, Lexile and Quantile measures allow us to do a couple of really, really important things uh, and under this umbrella of targeting our instruction to our students' unique abilities. On the Lexile side, we can actually forecast a comprehension rate when we know the child's Lexile reader measure, when we know the Lexile text measure of the book, we can actually calculate about how much um, of that book that child is going to understand. And on the quantile side, we can actually calculate a success rate. So again, given the child's quantile measure and given the quantile measure of the material, we can estimate or forecast how successful that child is going to be with that particular lesson. But perhaps far more importantly is the idea that with these measures on both the student side and the material side, we can differentiate our instruction and provide some scaffolding to help all of our students be successful. Of course, in any given classroom, we have a wide variety of abilities from, from the low end all the way up to the high end. We need to address all of those differing abilities. And the Lexile and Quantile frameworks and those measures allow us to do just that. And then they go a step farther in helping connect us with materials that we can use to help that child learn their grade level standards at, at, at that level where they are. So if a child is performing below grade level, we can figure out how do we bring that child up to speed? And if that child is performing above grade level, then we can figure out the resources we can use to enrich their instruction and continue their progress moving forward. Um, the second element that you see here is this idea of monitoring the progress of students um, toward their overarching goals of college and career readiness. 
we all know that that's the big buzzword. It has been for the last decade, uh, college and career readiness. The research here at Metametrics helps us to gauge our progress toward those goals. And here in just a few minutes, I'm gonna show you some of the tools that we have available to do just that. And then finally, when we think about our families and even our communities at large, the value of Lexile and Quantile measures is that they allow us to communicate student achievement more effectively. Stop for a moment and think about a child's entire K-12 or even pre-K-12 experience, even into those post-secondary realms as every student takes yet another different assessment, there's always a different scale that reports their performance. The value add of the Lexile and Quantile frameworks is that they are a common, consistent scale that once you learn, you know. So regardless if a student is in that pre-K world or if a student is a, a senior in high school, that same common consistent scale can be used across those grade levels, across those various assessments um, to understand and, and better communicate that level of, of student achievement. So with that, I, I wanna get directly into the star of our show this afternoon, and that is the Lexile and Quantile Hub. Now, I know obviously many of you are here with us this afternoon. Others of you are probably watching this recording. I would encourage all of you, if you can, and if you feel comfortable with it, go ahead and launch a web browser and follow along with me. In that web browser, if you would go to hub.lexile.com, you'll have access to the very things, the very resources and tools I'm about to describe. So again, if you can do that, if you feel comfortable with it, that's great. If not, um, feel free to pause this this recording if you're if you're joining us via that route, or if you want to come back and do this later, that's certainly fine as as well. But I want to make sure that we give you some time to explore these tools, to explore these resources right here this afternoon. I know more than anything else in, in my time as a high school English teacher, what I valued most in professional learning was having that time to actually make things applicable to the jobs and the tasks that I needed to do. And we definitely want to make sure that we value and honor that idea here this afternoon and give you all some time to do that. So if you have uh, that luxury, go ahead and launch a browser and go to Hub dot lexile dot com. The very first thing that you will need to do when you visit hub dot lexile dot com is register your account if you have not done so um, before. Up near the right hand corner, you'll see that purple register button. People always ask, well, why do I need to register an account? Why can't I just use this at, at my own will? There's two important reasons for why you need to register your account. The first is the fact that within the hub and within these various tools, you are going to find a plethora of various resources that you're going to want to mark and save for easy access later. The only way that we can do that is if we know who you are when you come to visit the hub. And that's the reason for registering the account so that we can connect you with the things and the resources that you mark as your favorites, the things that you save, so that next time you don't have to repeat the search, but they're all right there at your fingertips. The other reason that registering is so, so important is to understand that within the Lexile and Quantile hub, Metametrics has many levels of membership. All sorts of folks are using the hub. Students, parents and families, and of course, educators. Because 
of our agreement with the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Every educator in the state of North Carolina is provided for free, complete access to our highest level of functionality in these tools. So it's really important that when you register your account, and you see here when you click on that purple register button, we're asking for some very simple information. But it's critically important that when you make that registration, that you use your school email address and that you identify yourself as an educator, because that's what allows Metametrics to validate you as an educator in North Carolina who gets complete bells and whistles, the full functionality at no cost to you. So please, when you register your account and you see here, we ask for some very simple information. Make sure that you use your school email address and that you identify yourself as an educator. That will give Metametrics all the information it needs to give you that completely free access to the full functionality of the Lexile and, and Quantile Hub. When you do that, um, you'll notice you'll get an email in your email inbox that just confirms your registration. Within that email, there will be a link. You'll click on that link and that will activate your account. And so when you come back to the Lexile and Quantile Hub, after clicking on that link in your email, you'll know you've done everything correctly when you see your state logo up here in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Now you'll notice as I am a resident of the state of Kansas, that currently uh, my logo shows the Kansas silhouette and the Kansas postal abbreviation. Obviously, when you all log in, you will see the North Carolina silhouette and the North Carolina uh, postal abbreviation. That is your cue um, that you have registered correctly and that you are accurately logged in as a North Carolina educator in the Lexile and Quantile Hub. Now, before we get into the exact tools of the Hub, I wanna take just a moment and share with you all um, some of the support features that are available as well. I know many of you will be sharing this recording with your colleagues. You'll be saying, hey, check this out. There's a lot of really cool stuff here. Um, we know that not everybody's able to attend a webinar uh, at 3.30 in the afternoon uh, on a Tuesday in February. We understand. We've tried to build the hub. We've tried to build the support resources knowing that that's a, a fact. So when you log into the hub, you'll notice over there on the left-hand navigation bar, down there at the very bottom, there is a link that says support. This is the place where you can go to find a variety of different support resources that will help you and your colleagues leverage all of the various tools of the Lexile and Quantile Hub for your ad advantage. In fact, when you click on that support link, you'll be taken directly into our support community. And here, you'll find a variety of different things. If you need help with your account, there are there is information here. If you're curious about those Lexile and Quantile tools, there's absolutely help here. If you need a little bit of background information about student Lexile or Quantile measures or about material Lexile and Quantile measures, that information is there as well. And of course, we have a very robust list of frequently asked questions. So if there's any information you're curious about regarding Lexiles or Quantiles or any of the tools that I'm about to show you, please know if you visit the support community, there's information already there at your fingertips. And of course, if you don't find what you're looking for, you'll notice at the bottom of this screenshot, there's some information about contacting support. 
to receive additional help in highlighting and identifying exactly uh, what you are looking for. As I said before, there are also video tutorials and text-based quick start guides to help you not only with the hub itself, but each of the individual tools that it contains. So whether you prefer a, a video quick rundown of, of how to navigate a particular tool, or whether you prefer a text-based printout that maybe you can print and then have at your fingertips as you explore, either way is perfectly fine. We've tried to cover our bases and give educators everything they need for as smooth a takeoff with these tools as, as can possibly be. So again, you have video tutorials and you have quick start guides for each of the tools within the Lexile and Quantile Hub. So with that, I want to jump into the bulk of our presentation here this afternoon and really share with you and highlight um, some of what you can do with the individual tools that are contained within the hub. Now, before I jump into those individual tools, Jane and I have prepared what we call our getting started chart. Uh, and I'm sure Jane is sharing uh, the link to this chart there in the chat window. But the chart that allows you to see all of the different tools that are contained within the hub, a quick description of what that tool allows you to accomplish, the intended audience for each tool, and then links to those quick start guides in those video tutorials that we just talked about. So if you're looking for a one-stop shop for all of these reference materials that are going to help you get off the ground smoothly with the Lexile and Quantile Hub, our getting started chart is exactly where you want to go. So with that, give me just a moment here. I'm going to drag over into the uh, WebEx window a live shot of the Lexile and Quantile Hub. And let me get that go for you here. Let's see, I may need to stop my share and redo this here. Give me just a moment. I apologize for the de delay as I do this again. Okay, and I believe now you all are seeing a live shot of the Lexile and Quantile Hub. Uh, again, my registration, because I live here in my home state of Kansas, shows me uh, up here in the upper left-hand corner uh, as being a resident of Kansas. When you log in, um, you will see um, the state of North Carolina silhouette and your postal uh, abbreviation. But very quickly, a, a little bit of just basic navigation here in the Hub. What you see here on the main page are what we call our tool cards. Each of the Lexile and Quantile tools have their own tool card. And you'll see here, you get the title of the tool, you get a short explanation of what the tool does and its intended audience. The Lexile tools appear near the top. You'll know it's a Lexile reading tool when the tool card is headed in green. As I scroll down this main page, you'll notice other tool cards are headed in blue. Uh, that's a, a designation that that is a quantile mathematics tool um, that, that you are continuing to explore. So notice green equals Lexile and blue equals quantile. Just a quick crib sheet there for you as you need to do this. You'll also notice that each tool card has a gold star in the upper right hand corner. And you can actually toggle on and off that gold star. So as I do this, I want you to pay attention to that left hand navigation bar. As I turn off all of the gold stars uh, for the Lexile tools. And what you will notice is that those tools disappear from the left hand 
navigation bar. And we did this very purposefully because we know every educator has different needs and different tools speak to different educators. So for example, if I am a high school mathematics teacher, I may think that all of these various Lexile tools are wonderful in their own right, but they don't directly speak to the work that I have to do as a mathematics teacher. So in this way, you can click on those gold stars and you can actually customize your view and your experience in the hub. So if you are that high school math teacher and you only wanna focus on the quantile tools, you can tell the Luxile and Quantile hub that that's your preference and it will limit the tools that you see. So the Luxile and Quantile hub is customizable for each individual. And so you notice as I turn these gold stars back on, the tools reappear over here in the left-hand navigation bar. I will point out that at any time, there's also the See All Tools link. You can always click there and see all of the tools, regardless of which you have turned on those gold stars and which tools you have turned off those, those gold stars. So what I wanna do with the, the next 30 or so minutes here, and we absolutely, as I said, we wanna give you some um, sandbox time, as Jane and I call it, where we allow you to play with the tools and ask any questions or, or pose any problems you may be encountering. I do want to share with you um, some highlights of a couple specific tools that I think are particularly of interest to educators working at the elementary level. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce back and forth. I'll do a Lexile tool, then I'll do a Quantile tool. Then I'll do a Lexile tool, then a Quantile tool, because I know some of you have specialized interests, and that makes complete sense. And, and many of you have probably launched your own browser and you're following along. If you feel the need to, to break out off on your own and explore these tools, um, feel free to do so at this time. But let me highlight for you a couple of tools and their functionality. I'm going to start with our find a book tool, which is by far our most frequently visited tool in the Lexile and Quantile Hub. Find a book is really ultimately designed for students. However, we all know educators, parents, guardians, families, we all use find a book to help students identify titles of books they're interested in reading. So within find a book, and again, I'm logged in as an educator. So educators have some additional bells and whistles that a student or a parent would not have. But what find a book allows you to do is to enter your um, Lexile measure from your most recent assessment. So for example, if I know my Lexile measure is 800L, I can enter that right here in the system. Of course, if I don't know my Lexile measure, there's a what we call our back door. A student can identify his or her grade level and then identify, back to that Goldilocks fairy tale, whether the, the reading that he or she does at that grade level is easy, just right, or, or difficult. And based on those selections, the system can estimate a Lexile range for that child. But I want to go back and, and I want to just explore um, what this Find a Book tool allows you to do uh, for a student who is an 800L reader. Uh, and I'm actually using my son uh, as my mental example here. Uh, my son reads at about an 800L. Uh, Lexile reader measure. And his fascination is with um, books that are humorous. He always wants to read something that's funny. So in addition to the Lexile measure, you can the student can identify um, interest cat and even sub categories. So for my son, I'm going to identify fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. 
And then if I come down here to the subcategories level, I can actually find humor because that's what my son most wants to read. So with that, I click on the search button. And what the system is doing is it's scouring our database of more than 250,000 different titles and identifying, okay, what are the titles that are near this student's Lexile measure and which have content that measures up with this topic that this child wants to read. And so you'll see here in the results list, I know the, the font is very, very small, um, but we have found 727 books that match those criteria. And so what my son could do is explore these different titles. So for example, if my child decided, you know what, this book, Knock Knock on Wood, sounds pretty interesting. When he clicks on this title, um, he gets a short summary of what this, this book is about. Additionally, he also gets some identification of vocabulary words that might trip him up as he reads. And notice that not only is the vocabulary word itself provided, but there are definitions right there that might help front load some of that vocabulary load um, that, that, that he may, may face. And so if my son decides um, that this book is something that he definitely wants to read, all he needs to do is come up here in the upper right-hand corner and notice there's a heart that begins shaded gray. Um, if I click on that heart, it turns red. In other words, I've marked this book as a favorite and it's been added to my bookshelf. And so when I click on my bookshelf, I see a list of all the titles that I've identified as books that I want to read. So I can print this list off. I can share it with my parents, my grandparents. If I have a birthday coming up, I can suggest these are great birthday gift ideas, whatever it may be. Maybe it's summertime and I'm building my summer reading list um, for why school is, is not in, in session. So the book list and the bookshelf allows us to do just that. Notice also there are links. If I want to find that title on Amazon, or if I want to find it in my nearest public library, or even in the open library, where I'm able to download an ebook um, free of charge, uh, no content necessary, I can download it um, there through the open library. So the find a book tool is a great resource, again, for pairing students with books that are one, near their Lexile reader measure, but maybe more importantly, two, are written about topics or subjects that they are interested in reading about. We know that student motivation and engagement is incredibly, incredibly important for our students. Find a book is a tool that helps everyone do just that. So that was a quick tour of our find a book tool. As I promised, I'm gonna jump ahead now uh, to a quantile tool. And I wanna share with you all um, our math skills database. And as far as Jane and I are concerned, this is the most important quantile tool for educators to understand. Because what the math skills database allows a user to do is to see the crosswalk between the North Carolina learning standards for mathematics and what we call our quantile skills and concepts. So if you would imagine for a moment that you took the entire K-12 mathematics curriculum in North Carolina and you teased it out into all of the various pieces of conceptual understanding and all of the various skills a child would need to master from their K-12 career. That's basically what's contained in our quantile skills and concepts. We've teased all that out and there are more than 550 
quantile skills and concepts. And you can actually then see the crosswalk between those QSCs, those quantile skills and concepts, and your North Carolina learning standards for mathematics. So within the math skills database, you'll notice I first identify my state, in this case, North Carolina, and I identify a grade level. I'm gonna stick with my, my, my son who's in sixth grade, and, and we're gonna explore um, different individual standards within North Carolina. And I'll just start with the very first one here, nc.6.rp.1. And so if that's my focus, if I wanna explore resources and alignment to that particular standard in North Carolina's mathematics learning standards, all I need to do is identify that and click on search. And so what you'll see here is, here is the standard reported. And then to the right, you see all of the Metametrics quantile framework information. So we see here that at its heart, this North Carolina standard is asking students to write a ratio or rate to compare to quantities. And you'll notice it's hyperlinked. If I click on that description, it takes me directly to that QSC detail page. And this is where I find a wealth of information. First, I see the mini learning progression that allows me to understand, okay, what came before this child learning about this skill or this piece of conceptual understanding? What comes at about the same time, these supporting skills? And what will this learning today build upon in terms of the impending skills. But maybe most important in terms of our instructional planning, planning are the various resources aligned with this concept. So you'll see here what the Math Skills Database allows you to do is identify 14 distinct freely available resources that you might use to teach this concept to your students. You'll see here that we have a variety of virtual nerd videos. Uh, we have a quiz. We have some online games. We have a couple of worksheets, a variety of different resources that might expand our teaching of that particular standard. Again, we're assuming that highly effective mathematics teacher is there, but here are some resources at your fingertips to streamline your search for what you need to teach this content effectively. And as you keep scrolling down here, um, you'll see that that complete crosswalk. If you're interested in seeing, well, this, this QSC number 654, write a ratio or rate to compare two quantities, what other North Carolina learning standards does that align to? You'll see that expressed at the bottom of that page. So you'll notice here, off to the right of these resources, you can actually click on these little plus signs and convert them to check marks. Just like the hearts in the Lexile Find a Book, the green check marks identify something that you've made as a favorite so that you can find this quickly and easily when you come back again. And you do that by visiting the resource center on the quantile, quantile side. So in any of the quantile tools up near the upper right hand corner, you'll see a link to the resource center. When I click on the resource center, it pulls up all of the various resources that I've marked as being favorites. And you'll see here, I have quite a collection <laughs> of things that I've already marked as favorites. And in fact, what I can do is then create these into lists. So if there's um, a, a set of resources that all apply to chapter four, for example, I can create that list and make that work and then actually create a URL that I can share with others so they have access to those resources. So the Quantile Resource Center 
is a place where you can not only curate your own resources, but actually share them with others. So going back to the main page here, and I need to pick up my pace just a little bit because I know we have 15 minutes left. I, I wanna go back to the Lexile side uh, and show you one other very quick resource, and that's our Lexile word lists. As many of you know, Metametrics is an educational research company. That's our bread and butter. We do educational research. One of the pieces of research that we've been doing lately is to examine what words are used in grade level textbooks. And our Lexile word list tool is a way that you can interact with that research. So as you see here, you can go in and you can identify, well, I wanna see, well, what are the most commonly used words in a fourth grade textbook about math? And I can click on those check boxes. I can download a PDF and here it is. Here is the word list of the most frequently used fourth grade math words. And you'll see some of these words might actually surprise you. Decimal, equivalent, quotient, uh, a number of words here that fourth graders will encounter in their math textbooks. And it makes sense that those words are words that we may want to front load to help our students be successful uh, with that particular vocabulary. Notice also we can identify just the general academic vocabulary at each grade level. So if I repeat that process, here's a list of the academic words that most frequently appear in, in grade four textbooks of any content area. Things like range, essay, condition. So if I'm building a vocabulary list of what words I need to teach my fourth graders, the Lexile word lists are an incredibly valuable tool um, to give me some insight into what words I might pick. Not to say that these word lists are comprehensive or that they are the end-all be-all of what vocabulary should be taught, but here's another stream of input something to consider as we build vocabulary lists um, for our students. Going back to the math side here for just a moment, another resource I wanna share with you all is the find your lesson feature um, in the Quantile framework. For those of you that still teach out of a math textbook, or for those of you that teach a math program, um, the find your lesson allows you to explore the quantile skills and concepts that we talked about earlier that are contained within a particular lesson. So for example, again, my son uses the Go Math textbook at the sixth grade level. If I type in Go Math, I can pull up a, a list of um, the Go Math various textbooks that are out there. And I can drill down into that grade six um, Go Math Common Core Edition. And what you see here is that the table of contents is detailed out where it shows me chapter by chapter, lesson by lesson, the quantile measure, in other words, how difficult that particular lesson is for the entire textbook. So as you see here, I know the, the font is very, very small. Lesson one in chapter one has a quantile measure of 690Q. And if I click on show QSCs, I can actually explore which quantile skills and concepts are explored within that particular lesson. And again, if I follow the links, then I can go to that detail page where I see the mini learning progression. And I see in this instance, the 26 different resources that are available to help teach that particular lesson. So again, um, from a, an instructional planning point of view, again, these quantile 
skills and concepts and these detailed pages that you can access through the various quantile tools are incredibly important uh, for us to figure out exactly where um, our instruction needs to focus and to find those resources that can help us um, do just that. Very quickly, I'm going to show you all one more tool, and then I'll give you guys some time to play in that sandbox and explore things on your own. Um, but I want to show you our grade level charts. And one of the things I want to point out, notice here back on the main screen, there is a Lexile grade level chart. But if I scroll down, there is also a quantile grade level charts. Two tools, the exact same functionality and very similar information. Obviously, one is for Lexile reading measures and one is for quantile mathematics measures. So I'm just going to go ahead and go in to the quantile student um, grade level charts that identify student measures by grade. And so if you're curious to know, well, where are the average sixth graders in terms of their mathematics growth on the quantile scale? The grade level charts will show you that information. So over here on the left hand side, I can identify a grade level. I can also identify, am I talking about the fall of the year, the winter time of the year? or the spring of the year. So if I want to see where are the average sixth graders um, this time of year, and then I also have these sliders that allow me to kind of customize what exactly I'm looking for. So I can see here from this chart that's produced, sixth graders here in the winter, the middle part of the year, that 25th percentile student has a quantile measure of 670Q, and that 75th percentile of student has a quantile measure of 915Q. So that gives me some understanding of where a sixth grader ought to be at this particular time um, of the school year within the Lexile and quantile scales. And of course, this is based on our national normative data uh, that helps you compare how are your students performing um, to the national average, if you will. But you can break it down by percentile to see exactly how your students might compare versus students across the country. So at this time, as I promised, uh, I want to give you guys some time to poke around and explore these tools or other tools here within the Lexile framework. So Jane and I will be monitoring um, the chat room. If you all have questions, if you have comments about the value and utility of this presentation, please let us know there. But Jane and I will hang around. Uh, we'll answer any questions that exist. Uh, but we want to take this time to really thank you all um, for your attention today. I'm going to exit out of uh, that live shot of um, the hub for just a moment and scroll forward, we know that we're not giving you enough time to really explore these tools and to flesh out all of the various questions that you may have. Jane and I have created what we call our office hours. Um, so every Monday afternoon from 3 to 5 Eastern and every Friday morning from 11 Eastern, Jane and I have a Zoom link. Uh, where educators can pop in, get the information they need, and then pop right back out and continue on with their day. So as you continue to explore the various tools that are contained within the Lexile and Quantile Hub, if you find yourself with questions, if you find yourself wondering, how might I use this tool? Feel free to pop into our office hours. You can jump in, ask your question, get the information you need, and hop right back out. And of course, we understand um, that not every educator is available Monday afternoon and Friday mornings. So please feel free, uh, if, these, if this schedule doesn't work for you, um, feel free to shoot us an email. We'll find a time, maybe it's during a plan period, maybe it's during a lunch hour, whatever it may be, where we can jump into a Zoom meeting 
and talk with you one on one to help you get the information that that you need. So with that, finally, after 55 minutes, you guys are all saying, I wish this guy would just be quiet now. Um, feel free to poke around the hub. Jen and I will continue on here in the chat room and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Um, but from everybody at Metametrics, thank you all for your attendance today. And please do reach out. If you have further questions or, or further discussion points where you'd like to explore Lexile measures, Quantile measures, or any of these various tools that you've seen today. We'll be here if you need us for the next few minutes. Uh, please take a little bit of time, explore what you have in the Lexile and Quantile Hub. Thanks, everybody.